Well, thank you for joining us, Louis. I have Louis Ruckman with us from Reno, Nevada. So, Russ, what do you consider yourself? Uh, I guess I'd call it a mining millwright prospector. So, have you always been a prospector? Uh, well, maybe I have. <laughs> Started out with, uh, you know, just interested in collecting rocks, a regular rock hound, um, and then working in the in the gold industry, you start getting used to the different um, structures that would carry values, and then of course you kind of develop from there and grows into a good pastime. So now you've taken this experience and developed it into a career. Um, somewhat. So where can one find gold? Well, you know, gold is where gold is. <laughs> it, uh, it tends to have a signature, which is an interesting thing. Um, they can actually find gold in the United States where they can say, oh, this came from Canada. Or they can say, oh, this, this gold originated in Utah, or this, this gold, you know, so there's an actual signature um, and in the different kinds of gold. Or yeah. Um, it might be pushed by alluvials. It might be pushed by um, during the Ice Age with uh, glaciers. Um, so there's, there's lots of different ways for gold to migrate. Of course, you've got plate tectonics and things like that that take a greater amount of time. But So this is gold that's found in, in rocks. Are there other types of gold or other places that we can find it? Yeah, gold's a real uh, interesting thing. It can be spread um, in all kinds of areas. Um, you have, of course, the alluvial deposits, mm -hmm. um, your placer golds. You have a lot of uh, golds that are crystalline that you might find in volcanic rocks, uh, things that are epithermally, epithermally deposited, right. um, kind of crystals. Um, there's some uh, oh, flake type gold that actually flowers on materials. Um, you can get a real fine flat gold. Um, down by the Colorado River they have some that's really flat and it gets a kind of an oily film on it. So mm -hmm. it's really hard to separate um, gravimetrically because it tends to float. So you're saying it can also be found in plants and animals? Oh, so. absolutely. Um, in fact, the, uh, the Spaniards, when they were doing their investigations and trying to find mines, they would look for indicators. Mm -hmm. So Spanish moss, um, mullein, different types of plants were indicators that said there's gold in the area. And so they'd get down off their horse, start doing a little panning, poking around, and then follow that gold trail up to the source. So once you've determined that there's a possibility of gold there, how, do, how does one extract it from that source? Well, again, that's uh, really varied. Um, if you've got microfine gold, uh, one of the common ways of doing that is by heap leach, using a cyanide. Um, there's chemical extractions, there's gravimetric, you know, using gravity. Um, gold has a much denser specific gravity, so it'll sink uh, much quicker than other uh, minerals or, or uh, overburden. Um, so you can use a table to get it down in the, in the grooves. Um, so where do you see the trend going with this? Um, well, there's a lot of new developments that are coming up. I mean, uh, fairly recently you've had new types of float, uh, flotation devices that are coming out, um, new type of extractions that are coming up. Um, you're seeing people try to go after finer and finer gold that people haven't been trying to get before. So this is the gold that can be seen by the naked eye. Like right. Nanoparticles and Correct. items like that. Yeah. So there's gold that we, we can see and there's gold that we can't see as well? Um, that really all comes down to your instrumentation to be able to tell. Um, it's not like you can, you know, taste it or... Uh, so you really got to be able to uh, have the correct instrumentation to say this is what I have. And some metals, um, they just don't show up with some instrumentation. You might have uh, an AA, for instance, um, that doesn't jump the, the electron cloud enough to be able to read it. So it depends on the size of the molecule? Right. So you have to have something that's going to, to jump your... Um, oh, some of these other guys could tell you better, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
it jumps that energy shell up high enough that you can actually read it. So you might see something on your instrumentation um, on one machine and not on another, but it's still the same metal. So where do you see your future going in all of this? Um, another good question. I, I can't get away from it. I enjoy getting out and exploring too much. But you actually started as a graphic artist, right? Yes. Yeah. Went to, to college for graphic arts. Um, but the whole while I'm doing that, I'm out prospecting, still involved in the mining. Um, still doing what I love. You, I don't know how you can get away from it. So this is just like the old 49ers. Once it gets in your heart, you just can't get it out. Well, thank you for joining us today, Lewis. I appreciate what you've shared. I, I've learned a lot with the information and, and understand now that you and I also probably contain gold as we look out about the environment. You can learn more about gold by visiting our website, www.windsorgoldpartners.com.